Hey y'all, Just with Cotech time here. I know it has been a very, very, very long time since I've done any kind of tutorials, but there's so many out there and coming up with something new or different is a little bit hard sometimes. And life just gets crazy. Um, I decided that I was going to do a double-sided adhesive review slash see if I want to try it, if I like it, that type of thing. Um, if you are on TikTok, then you may have already heard about glitter peels. Um, you can purchase these from EnchantedSoapery.com. I will make sure that the I put a link in the bio. I have not used these yet, so I have no idea how this is going to shake out. Um, these are double-sided adhesive sheets, but they are repositionable. So, why is that going to be great to try? So, if you have used any double-sided adhesive, on any template cups that you've done, you know that on a painted base, when you try to pull it up, it's not easy. It's not fun. Um, it's You're scraping the, to get the double-sided adhesive off. So this um, company offers some that are repositionable. So we're gonna try it and we're going to see what we think. Um, I will say, so far the instructions are amazing, um, very, answers tons and tons of questions because these are made for these kinds of applications versus the scrapbooking.com or Elizabeth Crafts or even the Cat Scratch Pads, which are all three of my favorite products to use by far, hands down. Um, this one has clear instructions. Very first thing is test cut, test cut, test cut. So the reason why that's so important is I use a Cricut. I have no idea what setting to use on Silhouette or any other cutting machines. The different pressures that work for me and the different um, cut styles that work for me might be different for you. You might have a new blade. You might um, just anything. I don't know. <laughs> Your machine might work just a little bit differently than mine. I have always said that Washi.06 or Paper Plus work great for me. Um, I did my test cuts which it does recommend to do. It says to take a square, put a star in there, slice it. And so I did three different pressures. I did my regular Washi.06. I did Washi.06 with more pressure and I tried Paper Plus. Um, all three cut the star out perfectly fine. I was able to weed it out perfectly fine. I will say, Paper Plus, and it's probably not even going to be able to be seen on here, but it did cut through the material. Can you see? It did cut through. So Paper Plus is probably a no-go. I decided to cut my template out on the Washi.06 with just more pressure. Um, it goes through and it talks about um, super detailed ones. Uh, with lots of different lines and designs. They don't recommend using the repositionable for that. They recommend using the permanent, um, the traditional glitter peels or the permanent ones. Um, but I figured why not? We're going to try it. So I've done a previous tutorial on an ombre with this design that I have cut on here. Again, I used Washi.06 with more pressure. It do, They do come in... 12 by 12 sheet takes up your whole mat. So it alleviates when you get to your 30 ounce size where the scrapbooking.com or the Elizabeth Craft design only comes this way. So anytime I've used this brand, I've always cut it like that. The um, eight and a half on this side, 11 this way, this is the side that I cut on. And this one, I did cut a design on it. And that's what it looks like when you peel it up. So you can see how good it cuts. Again, I use Washi.06 for 99% of my templates. This is the double-sided adhesive. So this side sticks to the cup and this side is what you glitter on. This stuff is very sticky, you guys. Very, very, very sticky. I love it because it keeps my glitter coverage on. It sticks to the cup. Now, Glitter Peels has 
you're going to cut it. So you can tell I am not on my game and it has been a long, long time. You're going to cut it. The instructions specifically tell you how to do it, but it's paper side down, grid side, translucent side up. So that is how I cut my design. And this is the thickness of the material so you can see it. Um, one side is stickier than the other, but still nice. It looks like it's going to be repositionable just fine. Again, washi.06 more pressure. That's what I did it. Grid up. And this is for the repositionable only. Follow their instructions, do your own test cuts. Obviously, once I cut all my, and I, I have my test cut sheet, so this was all one sheet that I used. Um, I did my test down at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna have a lot more excess, it's gonna be leftovers. Um, if I wanted to do like a striped cup or anything like that, I can hold on to these little bits and pieces and use them down the road. Totally up to you. Again, takes up a whole sheet so you can do your 30 by 30 cups. So, I have been using the 20 ounce Slim Straights for a very, very long time when I'm doing my template cups. And I cut mine at 9.18 by 8.125. I have been very, very consistent about cutting on that. I do want to show you, I, I, this probably isn't going to pick up my luck, but 9.18 by 8.125 does have your seam hit almost perfect, almost perfect. Um, for all intents and purposes, we're going to be doing this on a black base, which actually I painted this base white, I glittered it with the Tacket method and tried to do the cow print, and my cow print turned green. So I spray painted it black for the purpose of this tutorial. This spray paint did gas off and it's been spray painted black for, oh, you know, probably two weeks, <laughs> just waiting for me. So with that tiny bit of spray paint, Tacket spray paint, my seam, is just slightly off my two little pieces and like i said you're not being able to see this probably not but where the two are going to line up is just slightly off so when sizing your templates you need to take into account what you've done to the base if you're going straight on a stainless steel base then one size is going to work perfectly fine if you are going on to a base that's got spray paint, maybe it has a layer of um, tacket, maybe it's got epoxy, whatever that looks like, just make sure that you've accounted for additional thickness. Do a little test before you go through and waste any of your material. But I left my same starter strip and we're gonna do this like we've done all of them. So wish me luck because this is my first time. Um, Again, I'm going to be doing this and you can see that my little starter strip is actually going to come right up right now. So never mind about that. Is what it is. And I just have to remind myself, this is repositionable, so it is still sticky right there. I'm gonna go on ahead and follow my grid right here, and I'm just gonna cut that part away because that's life. Okay, anytime I've done these cups, I've done them the same way. I get everything lined up and make sure that my design is good to go. So for those of you folks doing your burst tumblers or anything like that, same thing. Um, get it all lined up. Make sure you're happy with where everything is lining up. 
I don't have my electrical tape because I, I wasn't even 100% sure I was going to do this tutorial today. But, you know. So, we're just going to use regular old scotch tape. So, this is how I've done my cups ever since I started doing the double-sided adhesive. I tape the top. We're going to tape the bottom. We're going to open it up. I use another cup so it doesn't roll. I've never separated this material, so wish me luck. I'm sure it's going to be fine. All I'm going to be doing right now, and because my little starter strip is now cut off, which is my own fault, I just need to separate these. Okay. So, biggest thing is, is you don't want to have had your design cut through your paper, obviously. Same as always. We're going to push that bad boy down. And I tuck this. I can pull my tape off. Maybe, there we go. We're gonna roll it forward. And we're gonna get everything pushed down onto this cup. And I can see right now that it's probably a good thing that this is repositionable, because I'm already off. Good times, folks, good times. That's what happens when you don't do a tutorial for the better part of six months, seven months. Okay, so you're gonna wanna push it down and let's just act like we're lined up because this is repositionable. So I'm going to do it the same way I've done every other cup that I've wrapped. I'm going to work these air bubbles out. Because it's clear, clear like this, I think it's a little bit more noticeable of where your air bubbles are. Let's see how I did. Oh, actually... Sorry, y'all, I'm actually on. Okay. Okay. Either way. So, you can see there's quite a bit of air bubbles, so let's work them out, right? We should be able to work them out. I believe it says repositional peels should be... Use your finger to smooth out the glitter peel, work out any bubbles. Typically, you should not need to pop any because it is repositionable. So, moment of truth. Again, painted base. Um, just so you can kind of see, we're going to push this together a little bit better. But there's my seam, my design on there, and we do have quite a bit of air bubbles in, on here. But let's peel this guy. I must have a little bit of overlap. Let's peel this guy away. You guys. So you can see right there where my washi point oh six where I cut through in a few spots. More pressure. So my guess is washi point oh six without any pressure probably would have been dead on for my cricket. We're just going to work out the rest of these bubbles and we're going to see about how this stuff holds the glitter. This is the point where you guys feel free to fast forward because you know I don't like editing these. Probably another good reason why I haven't been making any for a while. Okay, always starting darkest to lightest and 
I know the burst cups are huge right now, and I've actually yet to do a true burst cup. Um, but this flower design to me is it's pretty close to being a burst cup. So we're gonna do darkest to lightest colors. And I did not go back and watch my original video to see exactly which um, colors I used when I made this cup the first time. I probably should have lifted it up a little bit higher, but it's all good. So, Let's see here. Let's find a good spot to start pulling this off. And you guys, it's been a hot minute since I've done any of this style cup. So you might have to bear with me. I'm going to be doing the entire outline first because I'm going to make it black. It's going to be my darkest color. And so the instructions say that it does not do very well with intricate templates. And me being me, I had to know if that was really the case. So here we go. So this is kind of like a, it, the texture of this material is kind of like a, how do I explain it? Like a gauzy, I don't know, that's not it. Um, it has like a, for the love, this is part of the reason why I'm not doing any tutorials because I can't find words anymore. Um, it, it has like a mesh that, there you go, like a mesh um, deal. And I probably should have worked out some of these air bubbles a little bit better. But like I said, the directions basically said that this is not going to do good with intricate cuts. And I did use Washi.06, more pressure on a Cricut. Um, I did have some pieces that cut through. I showed you that, so, but... I would say, for my own intents and purposes, she looks to be holding down pretty dang good. And we are just gonna keep pulling this guy away. Pulling it away. And it's been a long time since I've tested any of the other um, double-sided adhesives that have since kind of come out. I have a pretty good stack of the double-sided adhesives from scrapbooking.com and Elizabeth Craft Design, and I like those so much, I've just kind of held on to them. And I ordered a lot. So, but I wanted to give these guys a try. So, um, pricing on this, I believe I have my little bill. I paid $30 for 10 12 by 12 sheets. Um, so not horrible. And it looks like I got one little guy here that we're going to weed out. And if you guys just watched that, that weeded out very nice. It did weed out very nice. That is my seam. Again, I've got some bubbles in here I probably should have worked out, but I was being a, a lazy bones. Okay. Now, my husband is going to kill me when he gets home. You guys didn't burn anything up here to catch my glitter. Okay. This is just a ultra fine gunmetal. This one's from Hobby Lobby. Again, this is a test cut. Use whatever glitters make you happy in life. I 
I'm doing my whole outline first. And I'm really hoping that as I go through and do this outline that I can also kind of push down and get rid of any air bubbles at the same time. Should have had a better sheet of paper. Live and learn, kids. Live and learn. So, I do think. It would be a little bit fun once I get this cup completely glittered to see if I can pull it off and stick it on the stainless steel cup. Could be a good idea, could be bad. And anytime you're using double-sided adhesive, kind of think of this sheet as like tack it. You know, you're basically pushing the glitter down onto the cup. So you guys have seen me do this portion before. I think what I will do is I will actually go get the correct paper so I'm not I do have supper cooking, and the last thing I really want is to have, um, you know, glitter with my dinner. I should have made that sure that seam was down a little bit better because I'm pretty sure I just got glitter on the adhesive part. Again, me being a lazy bone, it's nothing against their product. Should have just made sure it was pushed down a little bit better. Okay. So we've got our gunmetal part done, and I'll do the other colors sped up. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm back. I've got all of my little mesh um, pieces peeled off this cup. Um, I described the mesh as kind of what this material is, this glitter pure material, glitter peel material. And I'm simply just going to act like this is an ombre right now. So I'm going to start with, I've just got three different blues that I'm going to do. Like I said, I've done one very similar to this on a previous tutorial. And we're just gonna rub a dab dab. And again, 
I just want to say this right here is 100% my fault. I should have pushed this little seam down a lot better. So just keep that in mind whenever we do the final take on it. First time using this product and I did not push it down all the way. And obviously you pick whichever colors make you happy. You guys know I love, I have a thing for blue. I can't help myself. I just love it so much. It just makes me happy. And I think the only thing I did different on the last cup is I think I did a silver background, if I'm not mistaken, instead of the black. Let's, well, let's not use the big side of the shaker, I'll tell you that much. All right, let's just get some in between. Hopefully that's a different color. I don't even know anymore. I think it is. I think it's fine. All right. As you guys know, I have done a cup very similar to this with a silver background, background which I probably should have stuck with because I don't know if I like the black or not. But either way, um, so far the coverage looks really good. I wish I would have pushed out my bubbles a little more. I wish I would have done my seam right there. But, um, while I put some of this glitter away, the one thing that we are going to try is we're going to try and take this off and stick it on this other cup, this stainless steel cup, because I think that it might show us just what this coverage actually looks like. Right? It's been so long since I've done a tutorial, it feels like it's like day one. <laughs> I can't even. It's crazy. And somehow in the midst of all this, I'm not even kidding you, I burnt my supper. So, I think it's fine. No, it's fine. No big deal. forgot to set the timer on the uh, on the um, oven and yeah. there you go okay I feel like I'm in like a massive struggle but how many times we throw them in the side. Oh God. So let's see how good this coverage is. And again, this is repositionable except for that stupid piece. I forgot. Part of the reason why I didn't do this to start with. Let's see if we can't make it work. We're going to try y'all. Again, my fault, I should have used a different, I shouldn't have used more pressure. I should have just used Washi.06. I wonder if I come the other way with it. Yeah. You guys are like, why is she taking it off? Because I want to show you that you can just literally peel it off. It's the whole point of this. Okay, so 
There's my cup. Here's what I just glittered. Don't stick to each other. Oh. Oh, don't let them stick to each other. Oh, I just ruined it. Let's see. Yeah. Well, if she were thinking, she would have wouldn't have thought that. Okay, don't let it stick to each other. Fantastic. What would a good old tutorial be if I didn't completely jack right in that? All right, we're just gonna force this bad boy apart real quick. Again, don't let it stick to each other. We're sticking this on a completely different cup, kind of. But you can see it is repositionable, just not to each other. in between so the glitter that's on here is the glitter that's on here this is a stainless steel base I just pulled it off of a painted base So aside from the fact that it stuck together, if I would have felt different, it would have worked. I could have pulled it off of one cup and positioned it onto another cup. Yeah, it likes the other side of this adhesive, I tell you that much. But, so, <laughs> learn from me. Um, yes, this is the exact same glitter that I just, you saw me pull it off. Um, it's just on a stainless steel versus the black base. times you can reposition it that I don't know obviously this is again my first time using it but it does appear to be sticking down on this cup again so right on this black face again Goodness gracious. Hopefully this is not my most viewed YouTube because this is a hot mess of a video. But what I will say is it looks like it keeps a fairly good coverage on there, on the actual material. Um, I wish it were... It held a little bit more glitter because it is still very translucent, but depending on what base you're on, you could see I moved this thing and I did not spray it and stick anything down. So, this exterior color was just a gunmetal fine, and then I used three different blues. Two are from the Glitter Guy, and one was from Glitter Chimp. Um, but... 
it is 100% repositional. Don't let it stick to each other. Okay, don't do that. Don't do like, don't be like me. And um, yeah. I would say do your test cuts and really make sure that you're, I'm gonna throw it away. Do your test cut um, and make sure that you have it on the setting that works best for your cutting machine. Another nice thing, um, I don't even know if I showcased this a second ago that I like about this stuff. Let me find my phone. So some of you guys know that when you do like certain designs, you want to mark down what colors you want. You can also do a coloring sheet. You can write. You can write on this material and it stays. That's awesome. So if you want to go ahead and do a honeycomb or whatever template design that you want to do, you can mark down what colors and it's going to stay on there before the Sharpie would wipe off. Again, just reiterate, follow the directions that come with your pack. That is how it should be cut for the repositionable. It does take up a full 12 by 12 sheet. Um, and the next thing I am going to try out since I've got a hot mess of glitter and a cooked burnt, cooked burnt, burnt dinner, they make pre-cut designs. So, Folks that have wanted to do template cuts or design cups that um, don't have a cutting machine yet or haven't figured out how the best way to have your settings, they cut them. You can purchase them cut. Um, I picked out the Argyle's design. Tells me that it's going to be for a 20 ounce straight skinny cup. Gives full instructions. So I will be doing a video on this next and we will see how this one shakes out. So I hope this was helpful. I think overall this is seems like it's going to be a really great product, um, especially the repositionable one for people that um, are just starting out with templates. They offer a permanent one, so maybe I'll order that one next and see how it compares to the other couple brands that I really do like. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll link their website in my description. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me on this one, you guys. I know it's been a long time and I was on a struggle bus the whole time, but uh, thanks for watching Kotech Time.